I think owning a four-wheel drive can make you a better person. It teaches you things about nature and about the world and about cars. But I think also, and most importantly, it can teach you about yourself. It allows you to get out there and see places other people can't at the end of the day. It gives you more freedom to be with nature. Four-wheel drivers get a bit of a bad rap for doing bad things by the environment these days. But I think because of this extra power that we have to get out there, we also have become a lot more responsible of our impact on the environment. We aren't exactly tackling Japanese whaling ships like the Sea Shepherd, but four-wheel drivers are increasingly starting to identify with that whole movement, I think. And it's good, because for me, it goes right back to that very core thing about four-wheel driving, experience. It's not just driving into bogs and seeing how stuck you can get. Sure, you'll have to do that sometimes, but why you're doing it is important, not what you're doing. What you do is important, but why you do it is even more so. My four-wheel drive is a 2001 Land Rover Defender 130. I bought it second-hand around a year and a bit ago with, uh, with the intention of building it up into a bit of a touring vehicle. It was pretty much stock when I bought it. I bought it from an electrician in Young in the southwest slopes and plains. I grew up near the coast and my childhood memories are constantly peppered with trips to the beach in the family four-wheel drive, which was that typical family jack-of-all-trades. Did the school runs in the morning and afternoon, towed the school rowing boat team's trailer and did countless runs to the tip. Then on weekends it got loaded up with the family, an esky, some chairs and a brolly and we spent all day on the beach. I love that car a lot. I think that's where I got to drive for the first time on Stockton Beach. I was sitting on my dad's lap and I could just see over the dash. I can still hear the tyres squealing in the sand and feeling the car bump around in the wheel tracks. One thing I remember about the old car was how hot the floor used to get. The exhaust from the engine would run just down right below where you put your feet in the back seat where I used to uh, always sit sort of staring out the window and it would get so hot you couldn't put your feet on the ground. It was a uh, old, rough, beat up old Land Rover but I think we love that car. I love the beach. But since I've done a couple of trips into the desert, I'm now finding myself planning trips through the interior. There are so many stories out there to tell and the sheer emptiness of some of those places has this kind of allure that is hard to explain. I'm going to modify the Landy based around this idea of desert travel. Now, I want to keep it as lean as possible, but obviously I want to have something comfortable and easy to set up for extended trips. There's a bar and a winch on the front and a snorkel, and I've also replaced the old tyres with some new mud terrains. These are a little bit taller and a little bit wider for extra grip off-road, and I've mounted them on to some new steel wheels. And the cool thing about these is the internal bead locks that I've put inside the wheels. These are a little tyre tube that effectively clamps the tyre against the inside of the wheel, reducing the chance of a tyre coming away from the wheel when your pressures are low off-road. You can gain so much grip from reduced pressures, but it does come with a risk of de-beading your tyre. So, these bead locks are a good idea. It's a dual cab with a big hefty steel tray on the back, and I'm looking to put a canopy onto that tray. This will give me heaps of storage space, and I'll put a rooftop tent on top of that for sleeping quarters. It's got a pretty big payload, but like I said, I want to keep things as light as possible. At the end of the day, there's only two and a half litres under that bonnet, and although it is turbo diesel and it's fairly modern, it's always better to keep things on the lighter side. As a base car, things don't get much simpler than a Defender. You either like them or you don't for that reason. The aircon's pretty rubbish, and the dynamics of the road are decidedly truck-like, but I don't mind that. I prefer my trucks to drive like trucks. It's all solid underneath, with beam axles, coil springs and disc brakes. It's my perfect choice for a four-wheel drive. I love the old Land Rover, but I like this one more. It's my four-wheel drive, and it's going to take me to new places. New memories. <laughs>